Hi all, Jigs here. And on behalf of Housatonic Software, I'd first like to thank you for trying out Project Plan 365. And second, I'd like to show you how to establish a project management office in 10 minutes or less. Well, at least the software part of it. So first we'll head on over to the sign up screen on Project Plan 365's website. That's www.projectplan365.com and we'll create a new account. So this is the Project Plan 365 web portal where you will do some of the initial setup work before moving on to using the apps. We've landed on the resources tab of the portal. And here is where we are prompted to develop a project team. And we can do that now and or later. Let me just type in four addresses of people I know I'll be working with on company projects within the next couple of days. Now when I go to save this resource pool, I'm prompted to give the company a name. Seven North. An invitation was sent out to those four with instructions on how they can set up an account and begin collaborating with me in this space. So now I have an account set up with four users beside myself. The Resources tab allows you to change roles for the team members as you add them, or later delete them when they leave the team. A few words on roles. If you've used online apps before like WordPress, there is this concept of who can do what. In this case, we can say that Anne is another editor of project plans. Jim and Mary are collaborators on project plans. And Rick is just a viewer of any plan that he opens. That means that Anne can create and edit project plans in the same way that I can, fully. Jim and Mary will only be able to edit parts of the plan that we editors allow them to edit. More on that soon. And Rick can only view the plan, but not make any changes. So in short, we are doing two things here. One, beginning a resource pool for the organization, and two, assigning roles to the resources that determines their allowed level of collaboration. The other tab left on the portal to explore is the Projects tab. This tab will populate over time with your organization's portfolio of projects as they are added to the system. You can also create a new project from here, but let's not do that, and instead, let's use one of Project Plan 365's apps we can try out for free. Let me go to the Try Now page on the website and snag the PC version. Okay, now that I have the Windows app up and running, I want to sign in using the same account credentials that I used on the web portal. Great, so here we are. If you are not familiar with using Project Plan 365 apps to create project files, then you may want to pause this video and view our basic training videos. But for the brave at heart, let's just go on from here and set up our first project plan for collaboration. Let me open up a template that we provide for setting up a new PMO. Just a sidebar here, creating a PMO, that's short for Project Management Office, is more than just setting up this software. It's more like setting up a new department in a company. There are processes and procedures to follow, and lots of other things to consider. This template is provided to get you started down that path. So now I'll assign resources from our resource pool to a few of these tasks. Just tick off the ones you want to add. I'll even put in some labor rates. Why not start counting pennies right away, eh? Great, but before my team can help me build up this plan further, I need to enable some real-time collaboration. To do that, I have to go to the Team ribbon and tap the Collaborate button. As you can see, the app wants me to have Save This File to Drive 365 first. So let's comply while I explain why. Drive 365 is your hosted secure private cloud storage area provided by your subscription plan. It's just for products in your official company portfolio. In other words, anything put here will be used in portfolio computations like resource, cost, and milestone reports. Give the project file a good name and done. Now when you hit the Collaborate button, you can select the data areas that others can change in this plan. The most common of which is marked off by default, percent complete. But say you want a collaborator to be able to add resources or change durations, change task names, all of that. 
you would check off all of these boxes. Let me do that. Hit collaborate again to end the setup. Now let's close and reopen this file to demonstrate what happens next. We get this message. Do you want to open in exclusive mode? Well, essentially, we don't. Tap no. Because we want others to collaborate with us right now. We set up this file just for that purpose just moments ago, remember? If you were opening this file to just change the collaboration setup, or to do something else without anyone else joining in, you would say yes. Notice now there's a Who's Online indicator at the top, showing me logged in by my user ID. Also notice that when I tap a cell to change, there is a color indicator showing that I am working on that precise spot in the project plan. Now when others join in, they are assigned different colors, and they will also show up in the Who's Online bar. Mary seems to be adding notes or document links to parts of the plan right now. Just look down that first row. Anne is assigning resources to tasks. Jim is changing some of the task labels. And Rick is here, lurking, because that's all he can do with his viewer status. So that's collaboration. Let's pop back over to the portal for a minute. Notice under projects, there is our very first project in our company portfolio. We were just working on it. Then on the resources tab, and as an editor on the system, is going to be adding more projects to the portfolio. Mary and Jim are collaborators, and they're going to continue to update data as defined by plan editors. Rick is still lurking, but all of them have the ability to add their own projects to set up their own collaborations. All we have to do is to make them all editors. And that's how it goes. That's how a portfolio grows. Now, if you or anyone on your team want to see the automatically generated statistical data on your portfolio of projects, all you have to do is this. Make sure that you've created a master plan and embedded your portfolio of projects as sub-projects within that plan. Then make sure you've set a baseline for tracking. And after that, as time goes on, you will be able to see live statistics on all the activity taking place within all of your plans. In other words, you use the master plan to generate portfolio reports and to see who's doing what, when, and at what cost across all of your projects. For help making master plans and sub-project structures, see our online training and help. There it is, PMO in a box, so to speak. Let me know in the comments below if that's all clear to you or if you need some more help. Here's a link for some more training and happy planning. <laughs>